So today I'm doing something a little different. Uh, I want to show you um, what the process is when a client comes in with their own chair and their own material and their own ideas about how to design a piece of furniture. Um, sometimes I don't like when people bring their own fabric in because it doesn't always have a happy ending. Um, you know, sometimes the fabrics that's out there on the market, you know, remnants and fabric seconds and thirds in the fabric industry sometimes can be a bad fabric. But fabric in this case worked out good, but I really had to talk to the client about exactly what the expectations were in this job. And this is an interesting job also because it's a corner chair. And I mean, let me just bring you this this way to show you. A corner chair, what makes a corner chair different than any other piece of furniture, and that's why I want to show you, is the fact that you actually have to run the fabric on the bias um, on a corner chair. It's the only time we run fabric on a bias. And, and, and so they, they, there's why um, if they brought me the wrong fabric, um, it would almost be impossible to upholster this chair. When you're doing a corner chair like this, you definitely need a fabric that is an upholstery weight fabric and that has a certain stretch to it. And so the customer brought me a fabric like that. But there had to be more discussion about design on this job because originally she had French nails along here, you know, decorative nails along here uh, on the back. But those didn't work out so well a second time because this is a very old corner chair. Actually, if you can see down here, she has wooden casters, which is an indication of just how old this chair is. Actually, the client wanted to take these off. I said, please don't. She thought it would be better to have them off for some reason. I said, no, keep them. They're very unusual, very hot, they're very rare. Um, so, so this chair is very interesting to me. That's why I wanted to feature it today. So today I wanted, to, I, I wanted to measure the chair, to show you how to measure the chair. And then I wanted to take the seat apart and I wanted to show you the cake. Well, I'm very interested in the cake or the padding that's underneath it's called the cake as we've described in some other videos. But I just wanted to show you how to measure the chair and, and then from there we, we're going to take you through stripping the seat only today and then I want to see just what's left. Hopefully they kept the original cake and that's always exciting for me for a professional upholsterer to see because we definitely will reuse it as we discuss with the client. So the other thing I went over with the client is if you come over here, this is her fabric. So I suggested to put a trim on uh, or gimp as it's called where the French nails used to be in order to save the wood, um, the very old wood. So let's get going. Go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is show you how to measure a corner chair, which like I said, the seat is very unusual because it's on the bias. So um, as, we, as I've seen you, shown you in other videos, I simply label um, on the left hand column all the pieces of this chair and I have two slash marks to indicate front to back and side to side. So I'm going to measure the front to back on the, on the seat first, so let's do that. So I'm going to measure from underneath where the border is because that's where the fabric comes down. And I'm going to measure all the way to the back, which I get 33, and I add 3 inches to all my measurements, so it's 36. That's the front to back measurement. That might surprise people. That's a pretty big measurement. Now it should be the same. Usually they're, they're, they're even up. Don't, don't, yeah, it's the same, so it's a square. It's another thing that's unusual about a corner chair is that they usually square out like that. And um, really, uh, squares are very unusual. As a matter of fact, I can't remember the last square measurement I had, only on a corner chair. Okay, so now the border, which is this, we're going to measure up and down. And you know, you can use the, I don't like using patterns or getting people in the habit of using patterns, so I would say go about an inch underneath to about, you know, the top of the piping, which is five inches, and add two inches there. So that's seven inches. Seven inches on the border, up and down, okay? I'm going to go all the way around the chair and I get 80 inches. I'm going to add a little bit, maybe 82. So I get 82. So the inside back, up and down on the inside back, we've got 12 plus 3, that's 15. Side to side, we got 20 plus 3, that's 23. And then on the arms, now the arms on this are very unusual, folks. Now most people would just measure like this and then they take a measurement on the arm. But on this one here, because we have a pattern that is almost stripe-like, you actually have to measure from all the way over here, trying to get a bead on that, 12 
I got 15 plus 3, 18 inches. So we're actually making a, a, a huge rectangle here. And then we cut it. So that's 18. That was a side to side measurement. Front to back. You know, it's a little hard to measure these, but you're not, you can't measure it like this. Okay, that's the point. So you have to come over. At 16, you got 18 plus, plus 3, 21. So that's a pretty big 21 by 18 for each arm. Seems like a lot of fabric, but it has to be cut that way. This is very important because the stripe is going to go on like so. Not like so, because it will intersect. It won't look good with the seat, which is going to be straight. Okay, so this is interesting. Here's the fabric, and the customer uh, left it up to me on how to run the fabric. So when I look down my measurements, I see a, me a measurement of 82 inches, which is the border that goes around the chair. So if I were to use the width of the fabric here, I would have to seam it in two spots. I'm not interested in that. So if you can run a fabric railroaded with some of these long measurements, it works out better. So I'm going to turn the fabric so that the bottom of the fabric is facing me. Let's see if this piece is 80, 82 inches. I'm sure it is. And that would be the first cut that I would do. So let's just, let's just measure it. Sixty. Boy, it's close. Sixty, seventy, eighty. It's seventy-nine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the chair to see if I can get this in 79. So sometimes it's worth going back and checking your measurements. Of course, we add three inches to all our measurement. So what I did was I went back and I saw that the width of this fabric, after it's been railroaded, comes out to 79 inches and I do have enough. So that's really good. That means I only need one seam, which I love. So I'm going to cut this. We're going to cut the border first. So the border was... 82 by 7, which we adjusted to 79. So let's do the 7. We simply take a piece of chalk, and you've seen this in other videos. Nice thing about stripes, or, or uh, polka dots in this case, is that uh, you don't have to mark the whole fabric. You can just use the line of the dots. See that? I'm just going to go right along here. Establish the top of the fabric, that's important too. So before this leaves the table, and you've seen this in other videos, I'm going to mark this border B O R D E R top. That's the top border. So I've got one piece already cut out. Now try to fit these other ones in. I'm going to do the seat next. And um, we do have to pay attention to the fact that. It is stripe-like, even though these are dots. They have a, a predominant is the is the red is the red dot. So we're going to use that as our center. So uh, we have 36, which is half of 36 is 18, which just so happens to come perfect to the edge of the fabric. And that's what you're always looking for to save fabric. So I'm going to go up like this. I'm going to make one slash mark at the 36 there, and I'm going to make one slash mark at the 36 here, and we get our seat. So you notice how I'm not, um, I'm, I'm speeding a little bit. I don't advise people to go as fast as me. But, um, we're not cutting seat cushions, so we're not cutting to the half of an inch. This is oversized, so we don't have to be as detailed on that. Okay, I'm gonna bring this up and mark this front F seat. Okay? So that over here. So next thing I see, measure this to see what this is, to see what fits in here. My inside back measures uh, 15 by 23. Let's just see what we got here. We got, I got 14, so I'm going to go back and measure that. Yeah. 14 is okay, so I adjusted that one down too in order to get this, this is a good use of fabric right here, so inside back 23, let's call it 23, right there, get my red in the middle, 
my red dot in the middle. Very important because I want to match it to the seat. I'm going to mark this inside back, inside back, IB, top. All right. So we have an outside back also. We're going to cut up at the top here. Outside back 18 means we got to get that red stripe in the middle at 9, 9, 18, and then 7 inches this way. It's very small outside back on that. Right in the middle. Outside back. Throw that over there. Now the only thing we got are our two arms. Just about enough fabric here. So it, the arms are 21 by 18. 21. I mean, sh client showed up at my door with the fabric in hand. Somebody had told her how much to get. That's always a little iffy too for me. I like to tell people what to get for fabric. Sometimes when they bring it in, they don't have they either don't have enough or they over overbought on it. So it's 18 inches wide. I'm going to try to get, I mean, look at that. There's one arm and there's two arms. I'm going to mark this FA, front arm. And then I'm going to mark this front arm. And there's all our pieces for that, for the fabric that we need for this corner chair. And let's go try to strip okay, it Okay, so the other thing, the last thing I wanted to show you on this chair, this um, is, I'm really interested in, in getting to the seat on this to see what they got underneath or, or the cake. So I already took the cambric off. That's usually what the first thing you take apart on any piece of furniture is the cambric, just to speed things up a little bit. Now I'm going to tear down the chair by taking the border off first. So what I'm going to do is roll that, if I can, with my side cutters. Now sometimes if you cut this, you get a good um, grip on it, the whole thing will come off. Because I see one thing already that this is stapled. So hopefully it will come off in a good way. So let's just see. Oh yeah. So I'm this way all the way around the chair. I pull it. It doesn't always work this way. Sometimes it doesn't want to come off like, like there. So now I see where they've pieced it. And I'm not sure if that's where I'm going to piece it, but you know, it has to be pieced somewhere. And they've got it in the back. They've got it off one side, the back of the piece, which is fine. I'm really happy about that. Uh, some, sometimes these take an hour to get off because you have to take each individual staple out. And I'm going to put that down there for now. But now I'm going to go over the whole thing again just to get all the loose staples. And this is an important part of it. I mean, you don't want to you don't want a staple sticking up and then grabbing it, having to grab your hand and getting cut or worn the fabric when you're upholstering. So. You know, notice how I, I check it. I don't rely on my eyes. I, I use my hands to check. Obviously, I'm using my eyes, but I'm just the final check really is just to see with your fingers. Because sometimes these staples can really go invisible on you. You can't see them unless you feel them. Of course, you got to be careful when you do that. You the whole thing. Okay, so that's good. Clean that up. Now, the next step is to take the fabric off the old fabric. And I want to show you something before I do that. I could tell that a, a professional upholsterer did this chair because of the pleat work. These are really nice tight pleats and this is the proper pleat for a corner chair which is a V pleat. You see um, the spacing's perfect. Um, the, the idea of it is, is right. Sometimes I've seen these with only one pleat here which isn't the way to do it because your visual is this way. If you see this post this is your visual. 
So one pleat always looks a little awkward because it's either open, it's like open on one end. So this is, this is just plain and simple, it's, it's an even treatment and that's what you want. So um, I'm going to start taking this apart. Let's hope that the upholsterer kept, and I have a feeling he did, kept all the original cake. I'd be happy if he did because I'll, I'll rework that because we want to keep the integrity of this piece. It's very important because it's a, an old piece. It was made um, for small people. Um, back then they were all small, right? I think the average age, we talked about this on some of the other videos. This was about 150, 175 years old somewhere. Back then people were, I think the average size for a male was five foot four. And so, that's why furniture has evolved into uh, giant furniture because we've become giants. <coughs> so let's just see what we got here. Okay, this is a little harder than the board because I, I don't have much to grab hold of. I just did on the board. I had that piping, so I pulled at that piping. This isn't. Let's get this going. Okay, I see something interesting already. I see the use of Dacron underneath here. It's just. Let's just finish stripping this before we talk about that. Just for the sake of time, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this and then we'll get at it later. We'll get the rest of this later, but I just wanted to show you. So, I'm a little surprised at this. It's not thinking that the person who did this, this, this was probably reupholstered, I would say, in the early 80s. So that meant that the upholsterer, and then when I saw the staples, I realized this is an upholsterer who, was, who, who knows how to spit tacks. But, you know, with the new compressor that came along with the pneumatic staple guns, believe me, he was happy about that. He went to a staple gun. But what What's surprising is the Daycron part of it. So, so Daycron is a nice batting. It, it really is, as far as the batting goes. It, it can it can uh, do things. But I probably would have picked a cotton for this, 100% cotton. But that said, I'm still not. I'm still hoping that he he kept everything and not replaced it. So let's remove. Daycron's easy to remove. You just kind of pull it like so. I'm not going to reuse this. Obviously, this is dirty. So, and I might, like I said, I, I'll probably go with the cotton. So. Okay, now I'm getting encouraged. I, I see muslin, and it could be the original muslin. It probably is. So this is interesting. Um, there's some, some type of numbers here. You don't see a signature, but I do see 25 yard is what it says. So this, this might, might have been a piece of 25 yards at one point. That's what I like about uh, my business. You, you never know what you're going to find underneath. Sometimes there's a signature. Um, sometimes there's a date. Oh, dates are always great, but usually we don't find dates. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit here before we get to the next step. I did want to point something else out. What we put this muslin on, which was the time, it could be the original. They really were a craftsman. Um, I could tell just because of one little clue here, one little detail on the muslin, I'll show you in a minute. You can see that they took the time to cut out the pleats of the muslin on the front here. Because if they had kept the pleats, it would have created some bulk and maybe not make the fabric pleats look as tight as they were. So that type of detail, that's something you're not going to find in any book on upholstery. And the only way you would find that is if you took a class from somebody like me, who knows, or on a YouTube video if you're lucky enough to stumble on something like this. But this is, this is one of those small little nuances that make for a really good upholstery job. So let's take this apart and then you can see now we're down to tacks. You know, these are, these are held in by tacks. It's another indication that this cover is probably the original. So I, I don't have to be careful because there's no way I can reuse this. So I'm just going to kind of pull it this way. So I'm interested in getting to it. Now I'm already excited because now I see the original cake. This is really good. So um, this cake that's on here. Oh yeah, horsehair. This is a great, 
this is a great thing, folks. I'm really happy to see this. I'm going to restore this back to the original, minus the muzzle. But um, so this this is the, the the springs that are underneath need to be retied. So this has to come off. The cake has to come off. So now I'm going to start focusing a little bit more to carefully take this off. So I'm going to get my tack remover and my mallet. I'm just going to show you how I would. We're going to take these tacks out that are holding the burlap on individually. And we're going to do that all the way around. Get the front undone for us and then show you, show you what I mean what's going to have to happen here. Some of this is stitched. Okay, now that we, we, we loosened up all the tacks, um, I'm going to clip. There's the, usually a stitching involved in the, to the burlap. So what we're going to do is I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to clip the stitching and slowly work this up and try to get it off in one piece. Which I think I can do. Sometimes what I do though is I didn't, I didn't uh, loosen the back. So that sometimes it can be lifted up for the sake of keeping the same profile. And then sometimes you can just get at the springs and retie them. But I'm not sure if that's going to be the case here. And also I see something that I don't like, and that's hay. You know, so this has a lot of hay in it. And the problem, you know, hay is a batting. They used to use a combination of hay and horse hair. It did have horse hair on the top, which was the top batting for the smoother look. But I'm going to have to replace that hay. I don't like that hay at all. So I like half of this cake, at least. So I'm going to bring this down. So what else? The, the burlap's going to come off, folks, just to let you know, and then we're going to retire these springs, and then we're going to, we're going to uh, save the horse hair, save the edge roll, but we're going to replace the hay, okay? So we're going to replace that maybe with a rubberized um, horse hair, or a real horse hair, but um, I'll have to call a client to ask them if they want to get, if they want to uh, spring for that. So. Um, that's it. You know, we, we've got to the point where I, I just wanted to show you the cake and you know some of the surprises that you can find in it. I think this was a 50% good thing that it had the horse hair and that it had the edge roll, but the hay I could have done without. Oftentimes we just see that stuff with uh, horse hair, which would, would have been a complete cake the way I would have liked it. But at least I get half a cake, and half a cake is better than no cake at all. So thanks a lot, folks. We'll see you next time. Well, thanks again for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe.